Welcome to the first video lecture of the Lithography Tool Package Training at DTU Nanolab. The first lecture is an introduction to lithography and lithography tools. The name lithography originates from ancient Greek and is a combination of the words for stone and to write. Lithography is essentially a method for transferring a pattern from one surface to another. Originally the surface used for transferring the pattern was a flat stone that was covered with a grease film. A pattern was then made in the grease film and the surface was dipped in ink. The stone could now be used to transfer the pattern to a piece of paper, as the ink would only adhere lightly to the surface of the grease film pattern, but would adhere strongly to the paper. This process could be repeated many times, each time producing an exact replica of the pattern. The principle remains mostly unchanged today, except all the components have been replaced with more modern versions. Instead of stones and grease and ink, we now use high-purity crystalline silicon wafers, photosensitive polymer resists, metals, and strong etching chemicals. The modern semiconductor lithography process are used for producing devices with intricate patterns and extremely small features. These devices are the foundation of all modern electronics. The lithography process begins by coating the substrate with a photosensitive resist. The most common coating method is spin coating. The spin coating process begins with a substrate without resist. Resist is dispensed on the surface of the substrate, and the substrate is then rotated at high speed. The final product is a substrate that now has a thin resist film on the surface. The next step is exposing the photosensitive resist in order to transfer a desired pattern into the resist. In this step the resist is exposed to the appropriate radiation. If, for example, the resist is sensitive to deep UV light, it must be exposed by a tool capable of emitting deep UV light. The exposure radiation is partially blocked by a photo mask or other mechanisms, which leaves a chemically altered pattern in the resist on the substrate. The final step is development of the exposed resist to reveal the transferred pattern. In this step the resist is put into a developer solution which dissolves part of the resist and leaves behind the mask pattern. The dissolved part can either be the exposed resist, or the unexposed resist, depending on the type of resist used. The whole process ends with a substrate that now has a copy of the pattern from the photo mask. In the semiconductor fabrication lab we can use different methods for transferring the mask pattern into the resist. The first method we will talk about is photolithography, which uses photons as the exposure medium. Starting with the methods which have the largest wavelengths, we have ultraviolet lithography. The wavelength of the exposure light is 365 to 435 nanometers. Next we have the deep UV lithography. The wavelength of the exposure light for deep UV is 193 to 248 nanometers. Finally we have extreme UV lithography, which operates at 13.5 nanometers. The minimum possible resolution is improved as the exposure wavelength gets smaller. Some methods, like UV contact lithography, has a minimum possible resolution that is much larger than the exposure wavelength. This is due to physical limitations when using photo masks in contact with the substrate. The next method is two-photon polymerization. This method works by focusing a laser beam to a tiny spot which can then be moved around in all three dimensions. The energy of the individual photons used in the laser is insufficient to cause a chemical reaction when they hit a molecule in the resist, but when two photons hit the same molecule at the same time, the energy becomes large enough to cause a chemical reaction, hence the name two-photon polymerization. This method is used for creating three-dimensional structures. The minimum resolution depends on how small the focal point, known as the voxel, can be made. The next method is electron beam lithography. This method uses an electron beam as the exposure source. The electron beam is scanned across the substrate, using the same technique as is used in scanning electron microscopy. The minimum possible resolution for this method is mostly dependent on how small you can make the diameter of the electron beam and how closely you can place each beam shot. The wavelength of electrons, at typical acceleration voltages, is three orders of magnitude smaller than the realistic resolution limit in e-beam lithography, 
which is why the resolution limit is not really dependent on the electron wavelength. The final method is imprint lithography. This method uses a stamp to mechanically deform the resist. Since there is no radiation medium, the minimum resolution obtainable depends on the resolution of the stamp. The following methods are available at DTU Nanolab. We have a number of spin coaters, which can be used for coating whole wafers or chips. Some of the spin coaters are manual tools, while other coaters are automatic tools. On the automatic tools we have several standard resists. If you want to use non-standard resists, you need to use one of the manual spin coaters. We also have a spray coater, which is great for coating oddly shaped substrates. Features as small as about 1 to 2 micrometer can be made in our UV mask aligner and maskless aligners. Smaller features can be made using our deep UV stepper. The smallest features can be made in our e-beam writers. We also have imprinters for stamping without irradiation. Development of your UV, deep UV or e-beam resist can be done in one of our automatic puddle developers or in one of our manual puddle developers. Development of SU-8 resists can be done in our manual submersion developer wet bench. Additionally we have several auxiliary tools which are used by most processes. HMDS priming oven for pre-treatment of chips or batches of wafers. Tabletop hot plates for baking after manual spin coating or for applying crystal bond. Lift off wet bench for metal deposition processes. Resist strip wet bench for removing leftover resist or cleaning substrates of old resist. Plasma ashes for both resist stripping and de-scumming. If we begin by looking at the minimum resolution which can be obtained, we see that the tools cover a large range of feature sizes. Looking at the preparation time and the processing time, we see that improving the resolution comes with a cost of both increased preparation time and increased processing time. The mask aligner will expose an entire wafer area in one shot which is why the processing time is measured in few seconds, while the e-beam is slowly scanning across the exposure area. Exposing an entire 100mm wafer, with these settings, would take 26 days. Needless to say you shouldn't do that. This is also reflected in the throughput of the machine where the mask aligner can process around 25 wafers per hour, as opposed to the e-beam, which produces about one wafer an hour. If we look at the deep UV stepper, we notice that the throughput for 100mm wafers is much lower than the throughput for 150mm wafers. The machine was originally built for processing 150mm wafers, which it does much faster. These are all important notes to remember when you have to design your own process. The requirement for using any of the lithography tools are the lithography TPT, which is this course you are taking right now, as well as an online equipment course and the practical tool training, which takes place inside the clean room. This concludes the first lecture in the lithography TPT. Please continue to the next lecture which is a more detailed look into the coating process.